Paul makes a statement that really looks like God punished Jesus for our sins instead of us. And it's in 2 Corinthians 5.21. And it says this, For God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. It looks like a swap. God just lumped and dumped all our sins onto Jesus. And then uh, in response, he took Jesus' righteousness and he gives it to us. Looks good. Sounds good. It's not what the text says. Because the Greek doesn't actually say, for God made Jesus to become sin for us. It doesn't say for us. The New American Standard Bible, which is the most accurate English translation on the planet, reflects the Greek correctly. And it says this, for God made Jesus to become sin on our behalf. It doesn't say for us, okay, on our behalf. But don't they mean the same thing? Not at all. The word for us in English can mean substitution. On our behalf means representation. Am I playing with words? No. Let me explain it. I'll give you some analogies. So just say, um, I'm a champion swimmer. I go into the Olympics. I go to swim on behalf of Australia. On behalf of Australia. That means that when I win the gold medal... Australia wins the gold medal. I represent Australia and I take the whole of Australia with me on their behalf. I swim on their behalf. I represent them. So what I achieve, they participate in. Okay? That's what representation means, that there is a joining up together, a union, a oneness. If I uh, say that I swim for you, that doesn't mean necessarily, or that it can mean, it doesn't mean necessarily representation. It can mean I replaced you. For instance, just say I am going to play soccer. I have an injury. And then a substitute comes in. Not a representative. A substitute is called in. I come off the field and he plays for me. But he's not playing as me. He's playing for himself. And what he does, I don't participate in. If he scores a goal, I didn't score the goal. But just say he's called in as a representative of me on my behalf then what happens is this i come off the field he puts on my shirt with my name my number and i go back on the field through my representative and all the uh, goals he scores are attributed to me as if i did it he played on my behalf he represented me santo came on through his representative so substitution means i'm off he's on and what he does has has nothing to do with me anymore you see on my behalf means representation. What he does is totally repeated to me. The Bible doesn't talk about Jesus' death as a substitution. It talks about Jesus' death as representation. In other words, when Jesus died on the cross, we died with him. And that's what it means when the Bible says Jesus died for us. The proof is in the same passage in verse 14. Paul says, we are compelled to judge thus, that if one died for all, Sounds like substitution. He dies, I don't. Uh, uh, uh. That's not how the Bible uses the phrase, for all. It says, for if one died for all, then all died. All died. It's not one dies for all and the rest uh, get away with it. No. If one died for all, all died. That's so not instead of. It's on behalf of. And that's why the New American Standard Bible has translated the Greek in verse 21 as, for God made Jesus to become sin on our behalf. Because verse 14, he has said, if one died for all, then all died. It's a co-death. It's a co-sharing. It's a oneness. It's a participation. Whatever Jesus did, he did as Adam, the last Adam. We did too. We die with him, Romans 6, 5 and 6. We are raised with him. Romans 6, 5 and 6. And then Ephesians 2, 4 and 5 says, And we were ascending to heaven with him and seated with him in the heavenly places. That's the gospel. It's not that Jesus takes the bullet instead of me and I get away with it. Because listen, folks, this you've got to get this point. If Jesus died for me means that he dies and I get away with it, then he rose for me. That means he rose from the dead and I don't. Let me say it again. If Jesus died for me means he dies and I don't, then Jesus rose for me also means that he rose and I don't. It's not talking about substitution instead of. It's talking about representation on behalf of. Jesus doesn't, he dies for me as me. He dies for me as me. 
Well, it does say that he became sin for us. What does that mean? Well, we know it doesn't mean punishment. How do we know that, that it doesn't mean punishment? Here, the verse before says, for God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Reconciliation is a work of peace. It was an act of peace, not an act of violent punishment by killing someone instead of killing someone else. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them. So there wasn't a transfer of sins from Jesus onto uh, from us onto Jesus at all. It's a not counting of sins against anyone, and that the act, the, the work of the cross was an act of peace, not an act of violent murder when someone else takes the bullet for someone else. So what does it mean that he was made sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him? Here it is. What does it mean to sin? Now, it didn't say he became sins for us. There's no verse.